तू आ गया बेटा
Warm greetings to all the participants, presenters, and role taker uh, present in this meeting room. On behalf of Ratabanglai School and Ratabanglai Kitab team, I would like to welcome you all to this artistic and imaginative session, Thinking Like an Illustrator. Please help me welcome our presenter for this morning, Ms. Jenny Campbell. Ms. Campbell has been a freelance cartoonist and children's illustrator for 33 years more than 33 years. She has illustrated more than 20 children's books and has made hundreds of K-5 textbooks. So along with illustration, Ms. Jenny is also the writer and cartoonist of a nationally syndicated cartoon strip, Flow and Friends, which is distributed to newspaper throughout the United States. She is also a prolific speaker. And furthermore, Ms. Jenny volunteers her time and talent to multiple animal welfare organizations across the country and has rescued many animals. She is here to help us think and participate like an illustrator today. Some of you have might some of you might have attended yesterday's session of Ms. Julie Pellis, so the author of Sati, right? So Ms. Jenny Campbell is the illustrator of those lifelike drawings. It is a great pleasure to have Ms. Campbell with us to share her work and experiences. And before we begin, I would like to request you all to stay in mute mode. If you come across any questions during the meeting, please note them down. We will have question and answer segment at the end of the session. Now help me welcome Ms. Jenny Campbell to conduct this enthusiastic workshop. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everyone can hear me, right? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste to all of you. Um, I am delighted to be here. This is a real, this is a real honor for me. And uh, I want to thank uh, RBK and the, the BSM 2022 for, uh, for inviting me to come and talk to you guys tonight. So um, it's really exciting to be here. I am coming to you, technology is amazing, because I am coming to you from the United States. I live in a state called Ohio, and Ohio is at the top of the country, sort of in the middle, and we have an area called the Great Lakes, because there are five Great Lakes, and we are on Lake Erie. So. Um, that's where I'm coming to you from. And it's nighttime for me. It's Saturday morning for you, but it is nighttime. It's Friday night for me and it's snowing outside. So there you go. Anyway, um, I, have, I have been an illustrator for um, almost 34 years um, as a profession. And I have done many, many, many children's books. I've illustrated many children's books. I'm working on a couple more right now. And uh, in addition, I've done all kinds of other artwork, and I have done a lot of artwork um, for charitable organizations, mostly, um, you know, mostly animal welfare. If you know the Sathi book, then you know that I'm, I'm very much into dogs and, um, and into animal welfare. And so uh, I also have a cartoon strip. So I do a million different things. <laughs> And it's really fun. So the way I think I'm going to work this tonight is I'm going to, uh, I've got some of my slides that I'm going to run through for you. I'm going to run through them pretty quickly, showing you some of my books and some of the artwork that I've done. And then about halfway through, we'll move over to this. And I will give you guys a little drawing lesson and show you how I draw. And then you guys are going to draw with me. I'm gonna give you a drawing lesson. So make sure that you have paper and pencils, markers, crayons, anything perfect. All right, you got your paper, that's awesome. All right, so um, first up, I'm a little slow about all this technical stuff, but first up, I'm going to try to share my screen with you. Hang on a second here while I go to the sharing the screen part. Um, 
the bottom there it center. Is. There it is. Okay. I'm a little slow about this. So thank you for bearing with me. All right. And I'm going to share this screen. And we're going to go down to this little guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have my little clicker here. And I'm just going to run through the, um, the slides here and um, just show you a few of the things that I've drawn. This is the first book that I ever got published. It's called Lazy Daisy. It's about a girl who's so incredibly lazy that she won't clean her room. So that may sound familiar to some of you or to some of your parents. But uh, she finally has to clean her room because her grandmother loses her dentures in her mess. So she cleans her room and she releases a flood of toys that buries the entire town. It was a really complicated book to illustrate, but it was really fun. So that was the very first book that I illustrated that came out in the year, um, I believe it came out in 2000. Then I got in with an author who wrote a series of nine books about her dogs that were very successful. And this is the first one I did for her called Max's Rules. It's about sibling rivalry. When you sometimes get a, a younger brother or sister, maybe you're not all that happy about it. Um, but ultimately over time, you guys become friends, right? So that was what Max's Rules was about. We went on to do a couple of other books. This one was called Wings. And it's about this little dog, this little black and white dog who wants to learn to fly. And as you can see, she finally does fly, but this is the only way dogs really fly, is in a hot air balloon. I did another book uh, in the same series called Forever Home. This was a chapter book for older kids with about 100 pages in it. And it's about uh, a dog who was a stray dog who was found lost in the woods and eventually found her way to her forever home. I also did uh, a series, I did two books in a series um, for uh, a place in Arizona called Arizona Highways, where they do Arizona based, that's a state in the United States out in the desert in the Southwest. And they have pack rats there. And the author of this book, is a naturalist who studied pack rats. And what pack rats do is they collect things. They collect things and they bring them back to their dens. And so this was Zachary Z. Pack Rat and his amazing collections. And it just shows some of the many things that, uh, that Zachary collected. And this book was so popular that um, we did a second book, Zachary Z. Pack Rat, Backpacks the Grand Canyon. So this was one where, where Zachary takes a little hike through the Grand Canyon, which is also in Arizona and is one of the, the seventh wonders of the world. And he has all kinds of adventures and collects all kinds of things in the Grand Canyon, only to find out that the Grand Canyon is a national park and you can't take anything out of it. So he has to give it all back. But it's a very fun book. I did this one a few years ago and it's basically it's just a it's a retelling of the story of the big bad wolf and a woman found me through friends of friends of friends and I illustrated this uh, for her and she wanted it for no other reason than to give to her grandkids and it was a life's mission for her and I was really happy that I was able to make it happen for her. A couple of years ago, I got involved in what we call the ACORN project here in Ohio. And I'm very involved in a place called City Dogs, which is the Cleveland, Ohio City Kennel. And they have a lot of uh, pit bulls that were turned in. And pit bulls are big, scary, blockheaded dogs. And they're misunderstood. And people think they're vicious, but they're not. And so they were being put down. They were being put to sleep in record numbers. And so they renamed this area of the kennel. They, they renamed it City Dogs and I did a logo for them and they've completely turned it around. They have almost 0% of their dogs are put down anymore. And it's a very popular thing. Well, I met a woman through that who had written a story about Acorn and Acorn was this crazy, pit bull puppy and she was a volunteer at city dogs and no one could handle this puppy so they asked her to take the puppy home overnight just to give him a break give everybody a break because he wouldn't listen to anybody he was crazy 
And she figured out once she got him home that he's crazy because he's deaf. He couldn't hear anybody. And so she ended up adopting him. It's a true story. She ended up adopting Acorn and she taught him sign language. And now Acorn is a therapy dog and he goes to hospitals and he goes, he goes out into the world and he's, a, and he's actually a therapy dog. He's just, he knows all his commands and he responds to sign language. So I did the Acorn book um, just a couple of years ago. And that was so popular that we just finished a book that's the dictionary of symbols, uh, like signals for deaf dogs. And now they sell that for anyone who adopts out a deaf dog. So that was a, that was a very cool project to be involved in. Um, I did, this is, uh, we have a national park uh, near where I live in Ohio. It's the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. And I did a little book. I created a mascot for them called Ollie the Otter. And I did a, uh, and I did an Ollie the Otter activity book for them, which was really fun. And you might know this book. This is the most recent one I've done. And I did this with uh, my friend, Julie Pelais. And um, she is very, very much in love with your country. And she is very, very much involved in trying to help your street dogs. And so I met her through a, another nonprofit, a, a wildlife rehabilitation um, organization here in the United States. Um, she actually bought one of my paintings. <laughs> and then she contacted me and asked me if I would be interested in illustrating this book for her. And I said, absolutely, I would love it. And it, it's the story of Sathy, who is um, horribly burned and then is rescued and is taken to the, the cat center there in Kathmandu and is rehabilitated and ultimately finds uh, her forever home. So it's a wonderful story. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you should be, because uh, Julie did a beautiful job writing it, and it was really wonderful story to illustrate, and it tells a great story. So um, I have done other illustrations for magazines. This is for children's magazines. These are in no particular order, just things I've done. Um, this one was a I did this. This is this guy is a triceratops because he's trying. He tries really hard. He never gives up. You know, he's, he's anything he can't quite accomplish. He keeps trying because he's a triceratops. So I did that for a magazine. I did this one for a magazine. This is my skunk. Um, and this is my cartoon strip. Now my cartoon strip is about old people. So you can see by the color of my hair that it's getting easier and easier for me to write this cartoon strip and to write jokes about getting old. And so these are my two characters. This is Flo and her friend Ruthie. And um, these are, you know, these are based on old people. So you, you guys might not quite understand yet, but this is actually something my own mother said to me. She said to me one time, you know, I thought when I, when I was younger, I always figured I'd grow into a kindly little old lady but all I've been able to manage is little and old. So I thought that was pretty funny. So I put it in my strip. And this is one you guys might be able to relate to if you have grandparents or older, older people in your family. This is a granddaughter talking to her grandmother. And she says, you have a lot of wrinkles, grandma. And she says, I don't think of them as wrinkles, Francesca. I consider them my laugh lines. And Francesca says, wow, something must have been hilarious. So I thought that was pretty funny. So I used that one too. Anyway, so this is just a sample of my cartoon strip that I do. That runs in newspapers across the country uh, every day and on Sundays. So I also do jigsaw puzzles. These are a couple of the jigsaw puzzles that I've done for uh, my little town. I live in a town called Chagrin Falls. And that's our bookstore. And I did that for them. And I did this other one for them also, which is, a, a, you, you probably can't see it very well, but it's a, it's a VW van full of dogs, full of dogs and cats on their way to, on their way to being adopted. So um, it says, peace, love, adopt, I think. 
So I do that. Now we're getting into um, my true love, which is drawing dogs and cats and doing, um, I do a lot of work for free for animal welfare groups. I donate. When I got successful enough as a cartoonist and an illustrator, I decided I wanted to give back. And so animal welfare groups were where I wanted to, I wanted to really donate to. And so we're, I'm gonna start this a little uh, bit with my dogs. These are my dogs, Grayson and Tanner. And they were both adopted from, they came from a state down South in the United States. They were abandoned at a shelter in Alabama. And they got on a transport in our shelter nearby, near us here in Ohio, brought them up and we bought, we adopted them from the same shelter a year apart on a separate transports. So these are our dogs, they're three, they're three and four. And they are why I do what I do with the animal welfare groups. Just rescuing these guys and helping out wherever I can is a joy to me. So this is a, our, our local rescue organization is called Rescue Village. And I'm sort of their official uh, artist. So I do a ton of work for them. This is a drawing that I did for them for trying to raise money one time. And I just drew a pile of kids and dogs and cats and food and all kinds of things that go on at a shelter, at all kinds of things they need. This one was for, this was an invitation to a fundraiser that they were having in the winter time um, with lots of food and drink and, and lots of animals, adoptable animals. And uh, this is another one that I did um, with, it had a title over it that said, rescue someone and you rescue yourself. And uh, just some samples of some of the animals that come through the shelter. I did this one for another fundraiser that we did um, called Pause at the Pause at the Horse Show, because there was a horse show in town and, and we had a booth at the horse show, adopting out dogs and cats. I did this one for Mardi Gras one year for the shelter. And we called it Mardi Paws. And some of my um, some of my artwork has even ended up on vans. This is a van for an organization that does goes around northeastern Ohio, and it transports animals for low cost spay neuter. So people who can't really afford to get their pets spayed or neutered can can do it with pet through Pet Fix. So this is the organization, this is their transport van. And also I was talking about city dogs earlier and the pit bulls. Well, this is the city dogs transport van and that's my logo that I did for them. So um, that's really it. Those are, my, those are my clips that I have for you to just give you an idea of what I do. So let's go back. All right. So now what I thought I would do, let me get my view here so I can make sure that you can all see my, so you can all see my, my drawing surface. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this up. And what I thought I would do, I gotta tip this a little bit. There we go. All right, so hopefully everybody can see. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give you guys a little drawing lesson. I'm gonna show you how I draw and the way I think it's easiest to draw. And I'm gonna do some examples for you. And then when I'm done with that, you guys are gonna draw with me and we're gonna draw something together, okay? So the first thing I wanna tell you about drawing is that every good artist starts with basic shapes. So if you've ever had an art teacher or anyone tell you that you need to start a drawing using basic shapes, that person is absolutely right. It is the easiest and smartest way to go. So what you wanna do, my favorite are ovals. You guys know what ovals are, right? So like there's an oval, okay? So an oval, you can, you can use an oval to start so many drawings of living creatures. You can do, you know, heads, bodies, legs, arms, feet, 
hands, ears, paws. So ovals can, can do so many things. And I'll show you just an example of what I'm talking about. If you take this oval and you just add a bunch more ovals to it, okay. Okay, so it doesn't look like very much right now, does it? But wait, so what you can do with that is you can turn it into, in this case, let's turn it into a frog. Okay. I think you guys all have a favorite children's book that involves a frog, right? So I thought a frog would be a good thing to show you. And here's a little secret. It, when you start drawing, if you start with a pencil and you do all your ovals with pencils, and then you go over them with a marker or a pen or something more permanent, then what you can do is you can go in later after it's dry and you can erase all the pencil marks and you don't have all the sketchy stuff, okay? So here's another example of an oval drawing, okay? If you just do, let's do an oval there. You guys can see that, okay? And there, and there, okay. Again, it doesn't look like much, but if you take the ovals and you just use them as your guideline, and you follow them, not exactly, but you use them as a guide and sort of follow where they take you, you'll be amazed at, at what your drawing can turn into. And here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So you're just using it as a guide. And voila, you wow. have a horse. So you can even do it with humans. So let me show you how I do a human. Okay, I'm just gonna, and this is important too. When you're doing, when you're using ovals to draw people, you wanna remember not only to do the ovals for the head and the chest and the, you know, and the legs and the arms, you want to do little tiny ovals or little circles for things like the neck or elbows or knees, because what that is, is it reminds you to actually connect the head to the body. Okay. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I even do it as like hips. These are hips. And then you do legs, knees, calves, feet, okay, you can still see that good, upper arms, elbows, lower arms, hands, same deal over here, okay, and then, so it, now it just kind of looks like a balloon animal or balloon person, but if you use this as a guideline and you follow it and you follow what you've already mapped out for yourself, you can end up with something like this. Okay. See, it starts to come together when you just keep following your own the own, your own map that you set up for yourself. Give her a nice shirt to wear. And then see what I mean? The elbow reminds you to make it a real arm and put a bend in that arm where, the, where a bend would actually go. Okay, same deal over here. It just reminds you that you, you have a connector between your upper arm and your lower arm. And then let's give her a little skirt down here. Okay. Okay. And again, the knees. The knees remind you 
that there is something actually connecting your upper body, your upper leg to your lower leg. Then you put some feet on there. Drawing toes is a whole different ball game. Okay. Give her some sandals. And there you go. And now you have a and now you have a person. She looks a little wonky, but you get the idea. See, I'm doing her real fast. You guys have time to work on it. So does this give you um, an idea? Right? So are you guys ready to draw with me? All yes. right. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. All right. The way this is going to work is using the ovals that I just told you about. Um, you guys are going to follow along and just do everything I do. I'll do something and then you guys do it and just follow what I do. And um, you're going to be amazed at how incredibly talented you are. Okay. All right. Just watch. Okay. So you're going to do, you're going to start with an oval like that. Just a basic oval. So just draw, just draw a basic oval like that. Okay. And it can be, you can work as large as you want or as small as you want, whatever works for you. Okay, so then the next one is gonna be a skinnier oval that sticks out of the left side of your original oval. Okay. All right. And then down here where the two meet right here, you're gonna do sort of a long skinny oval, a little shorter one, kind of like that. Okay, all right. Okay, now when you when you get that, am I going? I hope I'm not going too fast for you. Everything good? Yes, okay. yes, Miss Jenny. You okay? The speed, the speed okay. is fine. <laughs> okay, good. Easy. All right. So now let's do an oval. Let's do an oval right there, and then a smaller oval at the top of it. I know it looks weird. I know it looks really weird, but just trust me on this. And then you're gonna do the same thing, do another oval here with another oval on top of it like that. Okay. All right. Yes. I bet you guys are doing great. <laughs> okay. In your original oval, right about here, I want you to draw, just draw a circle and then draw a smaller circle inside of it and you can color that one in. So you guys probably know what that's gonna be, right? Looks like an eyeball to me, what do you think? Okay. All right, so we are ready at this point to start going over what we've drawn. And this really is exactly how professional artists draw. We start by roughing everything out with ovals I still draw this way after 34 years. And you rough everything out with ovals and then you go back and use that as a guideline. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over what we just drew. You're gonna use this as a guideline, but you're not gonna follow it exactly, but you're gonna follow it pretty well, okay? So start at the beginning up here at the top of your first oval, and then you're gonna do one fluid line out to the end of the smaller oval out here. Okay, so it's just a nice fluid line and you've now connected these two ovals. And once you get out here, I think you better draw a big shiny black nose for your dog. Remember your dog can't smell if he doesn't have a nose, right? Okay, so there we go. All right, so you got a nice nose on that dog. Give that dog a good nose, a good nose for sniffing. Okay. And then you're just gonna continue, continue on down. You're gonna come down here and then come up here and give your dog a smile because I'm a cartoonist, all my dogs are happy. Okay, so he's got a nice big smile on his face. And once you give him that smile, you can continue down here to his lower jaw. Give him a little fur on his chin if you want. 
and come back here. Okay. All right, starting to look like a dog maybe, looking less like a collection of balloons and more like a dog, right? Okay. Now, once we get down here, let's give your dog a neck, right? So something for his head to sit on. So continue that line down here. You can even put a little fur on his chest if you want, okay? Or her chest, sorry. This might be a female. Okay. All right, so once you've done that, let's go back over here to the back side of the head and do the same thing. We're gonna follow it down and then give, give her a neck for her head to sit on. So give her a little fur if you want and come on down here and continue her neck out like that. Okay. And we still have these little powder puffs up here. So what you're gonna do with these is just follow Follow the ovals. You're gonna come up here and you're gonna follow them just like you drew them. And you can put a little oval on the inside for the inside of the ear. And then same thing with this, follow it up. Okay, make the flap because she has floppy ears. And then make a little oval inside. And those will be those will be her two ears. So what you've just drawn here is you've drawn a kind of a cool dog, right? You did it all by yourselves using just a series of ovals. And here's a little secret. If you take your pen or your pencil and you start right about here and you just put some shading in there and follow the end of your oval down past your smile, like that and all the way down here. If you color all of this in black, except one little dot right above the eye, but if you, if you color all the rest of it in black, all the way up here and all the way down here, I don't have time to color the whole thing in, but you get the idea. Do you know who you just drew? Do you guys know? See if this looks familiar. You may have just drawn Sathy, the street dog of Kathmandu. See, what do you think? Kind of looks Ooh, like Sathy yes. a little bit, huh? All right. So congratulations. You guys, uh, you can take my job. You can, <laughs> you can draw Sathy now. All Ooh. right. Oh, wait, I forgot one last thing. This is very, very important. Anytime you draw anything at all that you're proud of, sign your name to it, okay? Mm -hmm. Always sign your name, put your name on your artwork. And that way, when you grow up and you get really, really famous, your parents can sell it and retire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've drawn Sathy, you've had a little, you've had a little drawing lesson and you've seen what I do. So that's really, that's what I have for you. So, all right, here's what I want you to do if you don't mind. I'm gonna put you guys on gallery view and will you guys hold up your drawings so I can see them? Ready? One, two, three. Oh my God, that's awesome. Okay, wait a second. Keep them up there because I have to do. A, I have to take a picture of this. That's so cool! Oh my gosh, you guys did great! Uh -huh. Look at that! Wow, we got some great artists out there, wow. you guys. They oh, also wow. some of them also added other characters with Chatty. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool! Oh, you guys did great! Oh, I'm really, really impressed. That's great. Well, thank you. You guys have been a great audience. You obviously have a lot of talent and you obviously did a great job. So do, you, do any of you have any questions? Well, before they ask the question. Yes. Yes, I would like to thank you. Thank you, Miss Jenny for this lively session.
And I'm certain that most of the young illustrators who are present in this meeting, they agree with me that your illustration, your all your illustrations uh, and all those books that you've shared are awesome. The characters look alive. Do you agree with me? And the illustrations are in detail. Wow. Thank you. Well, and, thank you. And you know, it also reflects how much you are compassionate and affect, and how much affection you have with those dogs, especially the ones that are rescued. Yeah, I have, here's a, there's, there's one of mine. Grayson, oh. Grayson. There oh, he wow. is. <laughs> That's one. Lovely. Yes, I, I do have a thing for dogs. Uh -huh. so, yes, anyway. oh, we can already see many raised hands, so uh, okay. me, we have time, so we are going to call them out so that okay. they can ask the question. Um, let me check the list. Okay, so Supraval. Supraval. Yes, unmute yourself and... Why did you be, want to become an illustrator? An illustrator, oh. <laughs> uh, when did I want to become an illustrator? I think he, he asked you why you wanted to be an oh, illustrator. Why did I want to be an illustrator? Well, I found myself drawing all the time. I doodled all the time. I was drawing when I probably should have been paying more attention in math. Mm -hmm. And so when I became an adult, um, my mother was an artist. So she was a good influence on me. And um, I just always wanted to draw, but I actually, when I graduated from college, I became a newspaper reporter and I did that for 13 years until one day I said, no, you know what? Mm -hmm. I wanna be doing that. Uh, and so I, I changed careers at, at, it was 34 years ago and it was a leap of faith, but, I did it and it's a wonderful life. So if you love to draw, mm. keep at it. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. We ha also have a question in uh, the chat box. So how do you get the idea to draw dogs and cats? That's from our fourth grader, Anushka. <laughs> the ideas for drawing dogs and cats comes from being around so many dogs and cats and watching what they do and watching how they behave with each other and watching how they, how they interact and um, watching the way they move. You can, you, you learn to, you know, drawing a dog is great, yes. but you learn to draw, um, a, you know, to draw well and draw movement mm -hmm. by watching, by observing and by sketching, by sketching what you see out in the world. And um, I just love the way dogs and cats uh, behave. I love the way they move. I love the way they interact with each other mm -hmm. and, and dogs with dogs and cats with cats and dogs with cats. I draw a lot of uh, dogs snuggling up to cats and cats looking really annoyed by it because I think that <laughs> I think that's true to life. So yeah, that's, that's where I get the ideas. Yes. So Watching. Yes, that's it. So what Miss mm -hmm. uh, Jenny wants to mean is for to do an illustration, to do a proper illustration, we need to observe. We need to watch how what they, how they act. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And, that's key. Uh, well, we also have Sabar. Sabar, yes, please unmute and ask the question. You had a question, Sava? Unmute. All right, let me. Okay, please unmute. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what was the most popular book you've written? Mm. Well, written. well, I haven't actually written one. Oh, wow. Um, okay. But I have <laughs> illustrated a whole bunch. I would say the most popular, interestingly enough, um, the most popular one that I, I think I've, I've done so far are the books that I did with my, my author friend, 
Sandra Phillipson, who, who did the books about her dogs. And she did nine books. And she started with an illustrator who was an older gentleman. And he passed away after the fourth book. And she found me. So I illustrated the next five, including Max's Rules and Wings and um, Forever Home and a couple of others. And those books were so popular because they started with the premise she had a dog named mm -hmm. Annie who got cancer in her leg and had to have her leg taken off. So her first couple of books were about Annie and her brother Max dealing with the fact that Annie was suddenly a three-legged dog and about how life, how she just took it in stride and she overcame the problems. And then the rest of the books just followed the dog's adventures. And it became known as the Max and Annie Project. And she sold thousands and thousands of those books. So I'd say those were the most popular. All right, so yes, Krita. When did you start with the dog? Can you please uh, raise your voice, dear? When did you start it to draw? Oh. You know when I started to draw? About your age. Oh. I, I started to, I seriously, I did. I started drawing when I was, when I was a kid and I just, um, I just loved it. And I drew, and I drew animals. I drew mostly animals. And I discovered as I got older and I, and I drew more and more, I had a very um, kind of whimsical style. And so instead of going into serious artwork, um, I became a cartoonist and a children's book illustrator because it, it really fit my style. Mm -hmm. But the but I started seriously when I was about your age. And the, I did my first book. I wrote and illustrated a book when I was eight, which was really silly. Wow. But um, but it was really fun. <laughs> and of course I showed it off to everyone. So I, I want, I've wanted to do this for a very long time. Okay. And Miss Jenny, even in this room, there are young illustrators who are of, you are on seven or eight. And mm -hmm. even they have illust started illustrating their books. So you're a great inspiration for them. <laughs> That's great. Okay. That's great. We have one uh, reflective and a very beautiful question here by Brabin. So who is your inspiration? Who is my inspiration? Yes. <laughs> wow. That's a tough one. <laughs> I have many, I have many inspirations. I am, I was very much as a child, I was really inspired by um, Charles Schultz, who did Peanuts oh. and did Snoopy. But that was more the cartooning side of things. For, um, for illustration, um, for illustrating books and things like that, I, hang on one sec. <laughs> there was a, there was a British illustrator named um, George Thelwell, that's oh. his name. And he did these ponies and he did these wonderful, illustrations, wonderful, crazy illustrations of mm -hmm. horses and little kids. And I read these and it's really dog-eared. <laughs> I read these and I, and I tried to copy his style and he really, really, he really influenced me. And um, so I would say he was one of my big influences too. And then, you know, and then uh, all the other you know, the, I loved Winnie the Pooh, um, all the original Winnie the Pooh, not the, not the Disney Winnie the Pooh, but the A.A. A. Milne books of Winnie the Pooh. I loved those. I loved those illustrations of Winnie the Pooh and, and 
Tigger and Eeyore and Christopher Robin. So those were probably my strongest early influences. Beautiful. Well, uh, okay, let's take a few more questions. There are many raised hands. We still have some time, so maybe we'll get to answer those questions. Okay. Uh, Dipashna. The bus now we can't hear you. How do you find your drawings? Please what was that? Please repeat the question. How do you color in your drawings? How do oh, you color your drawings? Okay. That's a good question. Um, I do uh I do a lot of pen and ink and watercolor. Mm -hmm. Uh sometimes I just do um I just do pencil. Mm -hmm. If it's a black and white book, I'll do pencil or pen and ink drawings, but like Sethi, that was, I did that in um, pen and ink, and then I watercolored, I watercolored those illustrations. So those were, you know, those are all done in, in watercolor. I probably use watercolor more than anything else. I've also used acrylics. I've also used colored pencils. I like to experiment and play around, but I have my favorites. So watercolor is probably my favorite. Wow. All right, Ruben. Um, what would what do you think should be improved in your illustrations and what would you like to try new? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what would be really you know what I would love to improve in my illustrations? I am terrible at cars. I can't draw, I can't draw cars, trucks, buses, bicycles, <laughs> bicycles. I'm terrible at bicycles. And so I would love to be able to draw cute, funny cars, trucks, yeah, bicycles. Cars. Yeah, the, the closest I can come is I can draw a decent airplane. <laughs> That's it. But I just, I'm terrible at transportation. <laughs> <laughs> So most of my dogs and cats walk. <laughs> and you're good at drawing dogs and cats. Amazing ones. Yeah, yeah. that's that's my fallback. Dogs and cats. Mm. And yes, horses Nirik. and pigs. All right, yes. Yes, Nirik. Why did you want to be a famous author? Artist. <laughs> Well, I, I wanted to be an artist and the famous part is, is still um, up for debate, but um, I wanted to be an artist because I thought I love to do it. I'm good at it. And can you think of a better way to make a living? I mean, I get to sit around in my crazy studio all day long in my sweatpants and t-shirts with my dogs and my cat all around me drawing little cartoons that make people laugh and make people smile. I can't, I don't know about you, but I can't think of a better way to make a living. <laughs> okay. So Arohi, yes, Arohi. So uh, if you had ever made a huge mistake, what would you do? Hmm. I have made huge mistakes. And um, I'll tell you what, huge mistakes are a lot easier to, to fix now that there's Photoshop than it ever used to be when I was a young illustrator. Because um, back then there was no easy fix if you if you really mess something up. I did a I did a big I was doing a poster um, for I think a uh, it was Reader's, Reader's Digest, Weekly Reader, that was it. Mm -hmm. I was doing a big poster for them. I mean, bigger than this sheet of paper. And it was a, a, a scene of a woods. So there were all these creatures. It was about recycling. And so there were, it was like a park. And there were all these trees, I mean, millions of trees and dogs and cats running around and raccoons and squirrels and people and people were recycling and people some people were throwing things away and other people were recycling and so I got the whole thing done and back then 
I couldn't just scan it and send it, you know, email it. I had to actually package it up and ship it off to the art director. And I did, and she got it and she sent it back to me and she said, oh, um, the, all these trees needed to be a mixture of, I had just drawn generic brown trees. She said, oh, these trees need to be a mixture of ash, um, birch, and something else. They had to be specific trees. Some of them had to have white bark. Some of them, I mean, they had to all look different than they looked. And I wasn't going to redo the entire huge poster. Mm -hmm. So I got a little bottle of white out. I don't know if you guys even know what that is, because I don't know, you don't need it anymore with autocorrect. But white out is what you used to paint on something you were typing on a typewriter, and then you, it would dry and you could type over it to cover your mistake. So I painted, it was just a white, like whitewashing, 200 little trees, and then redrawing uh -huh. all of the, all of the, the bark to look like different trees. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> today I'd be able to go into Photoshop and erase all those, the color inside all those trees and just read, you know, and just redraw them and copy them all. But oh, you, yes. I couldn't do that then. So this is so technology job. has made our job oh my much God. easier. Oh, That's wow. beautiful. You did a great job. <laughs> oh, that's really good. You just drew Sathy. Yes. <laughs> just exactly the way I draw. That's cool. You did a great job. Congratulations. Thank you. And I also have this cute puppy. Oh, so cute. Which is, which is my little brother's toy. That's um, really cool. That's really cool. So you like dogs? Yeah, I love yeah. dogs. Do you have a dog? No, but uh, okay. I used to have a dog in another place. Okay. Well, maybe you will again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you did a great job, so you definitely keep drawing. Because that looks great. Beautiful work, Arohe. Yes. Okay, so we have um, many raised hands. <laughs> we can take a few more, not okay. all, but a few more, right? Okay. Yes, uh, Aishani. Unmute Aishani. Can you? Okay, yes. Oops, please unmute. Okay. <laughs> So how many books have you made? I have illustrated the last time I counted them all. I have illustrated, I believe it's 28 books. But I also did a lot of books for people who um, asked me to do it and they, they paid me to do it. And then they published them themselves and just gave them to you know, like that Wilbur book about Wilbur, the, you know, the big, the little bad wolf. <laughs> um, I did that for a woman who wanted to give it to her grandchildren. So the actual, so I've done about, I've done 28 books. I have illustrated 28 books, but the ones that are, that have been out in bookstores and out in the marketplace and have reached the most kids, that number is closer to um, probably, 18 books. All right. So, so uh, Ms. Jenny, Brabim has another question and he is asking okay. this question repeatedly and he requesting me to ask the question. So okay. have you won any awards for your illustration? <laughs> um, I have. Um, the book Forever Home won, um, you know, I'm not going to be able to remember what the prizes were called, mm -hmm. but um, that the Forever Home chapter book that I illustrated won three national awards for chapter books mm -hmm. for, that, for that age group. And then um, two of the other books that one of the Zachary Z. Packrat Pack mm -hmm. books that um, that won another award, another national award for um, mm -hmm 
for picture books. And then um, there's another one. I know there's another one. I can't remember. I'm I'm Sam so old. Mm -hmm. I can't I can't remember which book won it. Oh, Wings. It was oh. another one of the books about um, the dog who goes up in the hot air balloon. Oh, yes. That one also that one also won a national award for uh, that age group. Um, oh, and Lazy Daisy. I'm sorry, my very first book. The very book. first, yeah, the wow. very first book I illustrated back in 2000 was a. Uh, it was a. Um, there's a large um, bookstore company in the United States called Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. and it was the. It won a national award, and then it was uh, the Barnes and Noble. It was one of Barnes and Noble's notable books of the year for the year it came out all right so, wow that was pretty that was pretty cool and you yeah. got award for your very first book amazing <laughs> yeah. Miss yeah that was yeah that book is out of print now too it makes me sad so mm -hmm. i've got a box of them in the basement they're the only ones left oh so yeah Wish i love that book get some copies of those <laughs> i should send you one i should send you one for the festival next year oh wow okay. i will i will thank it's an you. thank you so call. much yeah you bet i'd be happy to <laughs> well we we have atelier with his question yes atelier okay so what would you raise your voice up to there feel it a bit louder so what would you spend most of your time doing when you were a, a little kid oh. when i was a little kid because when i'm right now i just uh, I like to draw cities and i make yeah. that my okay well they see you're way ahead of me because the cities are another thing i'm not very good at <laughs> I'm not very good at cities, just like I'm not very good at cars and trucks. I'm really better at, at animals and people. Mm -hmm. So you're already way ahead of me. But what you like to do is exactly what I used to like to do when I was your age. I, 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 I doodled. I just drew all the time. I, I gave my, my crayons a real workout. And, and I loved it. And I loved it. And also, I also made your... And I also made your uh, the dog, but it's kind of not really like uh, what you do. Uh, oh, it looks great! Yeah, no, like, you did a, no, you did a terrific job. You know yeah, what? You know what your dog it. looks like a little bit. He looks like he's just got a rounder head. Mm -hmm. so yeah, he and also, looks, and also not a longer snout. And yeah, but he doesn't need one. That's the thing. If you uh -huh. if you guys if you guys all kept drawing the dog that I drew with you tonight, and you eventually would start drawing it your own way. And you would eventually create a dog that was, that's uniquely yours. It's a dog like you draw, like the Sathy dog. That's the way I draw dogs. So that's sort of my trademark dog. But if you keep, if you keep drawing the dog, it's gonna, it's gonna turn into your dog. It'll have characteristics that you created. And it'll become personal to you. That's the cool thing about about drawing. You can make it yours. Okay. Thank you, Miss uh, Jenny. Oh, uh, there's a Thank question you. from Sajiva. What okay. is your favorite book that you've illustrated? My favorite book that you've illustrated. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one too. Um, <laughs> I think. Um, I think the my very favorite one that that I ever did is the first one I ever did, Lazy Daisy, because that book was crazy. Every single page was this mass of toys, and I had to be wildly creative on on every page, and um, and I had so much fun doing it. I mean, it was it was my first book, so I didn't, you know, I was an unknown, so I didn't make a lot of money doing it, mm -hmm. and that didn't matter to me at all. I had so much fun doing it, and I just drew the crazy scenes on every page, and I think that's the most fun that I've ever had illustrating a book. 
So mm-hmm. probably that one, probably Lazy Daisy. Lazy Daisy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're the very yeah. first one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, one uh, interesting and very important question. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much time do you need to illustrate one book? Um, it really depends on the book, but uh, like Lazy Daisy, for example, took a long time because it was so detailed. There was mm-hmm. so much stuff on every page. Um, some books are very simple and the illustrations are simple. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would average that I, I can do a book from start to finish from the first time that the author gives me the manuscript um, until I turn in finished artwork. It can be three months or it can be 10 months. Oh. It really, it really depends. It depends on the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm doing a book right mm-hmm. now. It might depend and, upon the content of the book. Yeah. It depends on how detailed the mm-hmm. illustrations are and how many pages the book is going to be. Um, obviously it took longer to do forever home because it was a chapter book. And there was there was a drawing on every page and there were 100 pages and most uh, children's books usually are around 36 to 42 pages. Mm. So um, but those are also picture books and those are full color and these were little spot drawings, but it did, but it still took a while. Yes. So it, it just depends on the number of pages and the and the you know intricacy of the artwork. Mm-hmm. Well, and what I and what else I have going on because sometimes I get really busy. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, you know, Miss Jenny, we still have so many questions. Many raise hands, but there is one question that might solve. You know, answer all these questions if we get to do that. There is a question like, "Are you planning to visit Nepal?" Mm-hmm. I am now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, after after illustrating the Sathi book um, wow. and 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 studying Nepal and getting to know everyone that uh-huh. I've gotten to know through you guys, um, yeah, yeah, I want to come to Nepal. Wow! So definitely. maybe I'm sure if Miss Jenny visits Nepal, she's definitely going to visit us. And mm-hmm. we will be able to ask more questions, but right now Absolutely. we're running out of time. It's 10 or 5. I'm really sorry we're not able to answer all your questions, but I'm sure they were related with the ones that uh, the participants asked. <laughs> okay, well, I come... appreciate all the questions. Yes, we've come to us the end. So thank you, Miss Jenny, for your valuable uh, time. And again, for this, this splendid session, and skillful session. We learn many art skills. Well, thank you so much. You were all wonderful. And the, you, you kids are great. And you're terrific artists. So keep at it. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Jenny. And right. I'll also like to take this opportunity to thank my team, uh, Miss Tara, for uh, helping with all the technical matters, Miss Prakriti, for supporting with logistics and Asta for helping with the recording, and a special mention to our operation manager of Rata Banglakita, Ms. Monita, for organizing this awesome BSM Balsai Temotsav, <laughs> and also to the BSM team. Thank you. And yes, a special thank you to all the participants, the enthusiastic participants who are present in this meeting, and for your involvement and engagement and for those beautiful questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. It was really fun. (laughs) Thank you, Shilpa, for doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jenny. Thank you so much. Moderating the whole thing. It was wonderful. Thank you for accepting our request. Oh, thank you for having me. It was my (laughs) honor. All right. Well, continue to have a wonderful festival.